Good, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to the second part of today's seminar dealing with uh, uh, residential fire suppression systems. Now, we're going, I'm going to give you, as I did this morning, a bit of background to um, the changes that are coming in, some of the policy and some of the issues on timing. Um, we'll then have um, a technical presentation from Pierre Gaston of Arups, who've helped us with the, the technical side of this review and, 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 and this work. And then we'll have a presentation um, from Ian Goff of BAFSA, the Automatic Fire Sprinkler Association, from the industry perspective. Um, and then we'll, we'll round up with a presentation for, from Jeremy um, of Welsh Water from the water company's perspective, which is a very important element of this, uh, this new area of policy, if you want. So I just, as I say, I'll give you a bit of background. Um, the new regulations that um, um, have, c have come into uh, force, or the timetable for the implementation, the regulations have been made, but they come in uh, in stages. What exactly the new requirements are, and then a little bit on a pilot program um, which the minister announced last month. So the background to um, changes to the building regulations and, and um, related regulations are started in February 2011 when um, Anne Jones AM um, proposed, introduced, and had passed by the National Assembly the Domestic Fire Safety Wales measure, um, which Brought, um, proposed or re would require when commenced uh, the installation of residential fire suppression systems. January 2012, um, building regulations was devolved to Welsh ministers, so the measure predated us having building regulations competence. Uh, we then consulted between March and June. Some of you may have come to the consultation events that we, we held. Um, on proposals to implement the measure, but implement it now through the building regulations because we had had those um, functions. Uh, in Ju July 2013, in a statement, a ministerial statement on housing, on new housing, Carl Sargent, the Minister for Housing and Regeneration, announced that we'd be taking a staged implementation to the requirement to install uh, fire suppression systems, sprinkler systems. So in October 2013, the uh, relevant regulations were passed, and last month, in January, the Minister announced funding for a pilot sprinkler installation programme, which I'll talk about towards the end. Policy background, I think we all know, is that in spite of um, death and injury reducing over time in dwellings um, in 2012-13, there were still 14 deaths and 438 injuries from fires. Of, and the view of the Welsh Government, Welsh Government Ministers, was that the number of deaths of injuries was still too high. The overall policy outcome, therefore, was to reduce death and injury in new and converted residential premises in Wales. Three, three sets of regulations were made la last year, the first of which, the Building Regulations and Amendment Number 3, uh, amended the Building Regulations, and you, you we'll hear some uh, some of the detail on, on the changes to the building regulations. But we had a measure in place. The measure was passed before we had building regulations competence, and there was a misalignment between the categories, the classes of residents in the measure, and those the purpose groups that building regulations uh, deal with. And so the definition of residents regulations were made to, al to align them, and finally the measure was commenced. Um, and that provided the staged uh, approach to um, the requirement to install sprinklers that the Minister announced in July. So, that staged approach is that from 30th of April, for new and converted care homes, <coughs> children's residential homes, hospices, halls of residence and some types of hostels, uh, there will be a requirement to install fire suppression systems, new and converted, so that's not renovated existing buildings, but new and converted. And then from 1st of January 2016, um, for new and converted houses and flats, and that includes sheltered housing, um, the requirement to install fire suppression systems um, will be introduced. Transitional arrangements, I mentioned this morning, uh, Part L, uh, 2010 transitional arrangements, and we are repeating those for the changes to Part B of the building regulations. <coughs> Same, same rules apply. Full plans applications, building notices, initial notices before the date 
um, means that you don't comply provided work starts um, within 12 months of coming into force. From the cost-benefit analysis that was undertaken by BRE and, if, and uh, eventually became our regulatory impact assessment, which is published on the Welsh Government website, uh, this table shows the analysis of death and injury in, in the various categories of housing and uh, re uh, re various residential categories. And you can see um, that what we are doing in April is targeting the higher risk categories of residents. Uh, both de for deaths and, and injuries, you can see that houses and flats are at the uh, lower, lower end of the risk. And as I say, that'd be staged so that that comes in in 2016. The requirement is therefore that each residence to which the regulations apply must have an automatic fire suppression system, such as a sprinkler system. That's not the same thing. The building regulations talks about fire suppression systems and Pierre will talk about the um, rationality, the rationale behind, be, behind that. It's required that the system operates effectively and complies with whatever, gui whatever guidance Welsh ministers prescribe under the building regulations, um, and that's set out in uh, revisions to approve document B. So just to be clear, it applies where new building work um, creates a new residence or a change of use occurs to convert an existing building into new residence or residences. So that could be a large house converted into flats or it could be a group of flats converted back into a large house. But it doesn't apply to existing residences that are simply being renovated. The regulations doesn't apply to those categories there. Um, hospitals, prisons, schools, etc. Those of you that work in the schools uh, field will know that, uh, quite separately, uh, there, there is Welsh Government policy to encourage sprinklers for, different, not life safety, but for, but, but for uh, property protection uh, reasons in schools. It's not part of the regulations, but it's that, 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 that operates through funding um, arrangements, and that, in fact, in hospitals, hotels, sprinklers quite often are part of the design solution. But these regulations do not apply to those category, the categories you see um, listed there. Listed buildings, the requirement does apply to listed buildings to provide um, a fire suppression system, but in the same way that listed buildings are generally treated within the approved documents, um, it is subject to not um, unacceptably altering, altering the character or the appearance uh, of, the, of the building and the building control bodies will consider applications and they consider it with um, other in interested organisations, heritage organisations and, and CADO in coming to a view on that. <coughs> but listed buildings are not exempt from the, the requirement. Maintenance. Um, you'll hear about maintenance uh, t today, about what's expected of maintenance. You may have questions about um, how maintenance is going to be ensured. Uh, there's no legal requirement on householders to maintain the sprinkler systems. It is not practical to do that. Um, there's no legal requirement on a householder to service their gas boiler. So what we're going to do is look at encouraging householders to maintain the sprinkler systems so that they're in working order. Um, we intend to publish a householder's guide um, to fire sprinklers. BAFSA already produce a wealth of technical guidance and ad advice on the subject, but we're looking to produce something for householders. Because whereas the sprinkler industry um, is already existing, this is not new technology, it is predominantly aimed at the larger types of building and the non-domestic sector. And so in a sense, moving into the domestic sector is a new, is a new world um, for not only the industry, but also we, the users of that, those sort of properties. And that will require some extra guidance. So, I mentioned this morning um, policy development. A staged approach is being proposed. And I mean, this comes out of the fact, and, and I repeat a little of what I said this morning, that um, you don't look at policies in isolation. A whole host of demands are placed on house builders, section 106 agreements, affordable housing. Other policies, this morning we were talking about Partel, come along, all of which add, add to burdens that, that can represent um, um, 
serious risks to viability, particularly in low value areas. And that this sort of thinking, together with the crash of 2008 and the need to support um, the house building industry, um, led to the staged approach. Um, I mentioned um, Welsh Government's um, support for the house building industry in other areas, and um, that you can find uh, details of that on the housing uh, pages of our, our website, the Help to Buy scheme and those sort of initiatives. And you can also find there uh, the Housing Task Force, Housing Supply Task Force report, which has just been published, which is looking at how we can increase the numbers of, 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 of housing. The approved documents. Um, the approved documents, and that's an example of one of them, are going to be um, published in stages. And this is because we've got a staged approach to the introduction. So um, this month, we'll be pub publishing a new volume two. But because volume two also deals with flats, um, we are retaining the existing requirements for flats. Okay, because that doesn't kick in until 2016. Volume one, will uh, dwellings will remain the same. 2015, we'll publish a full new volume two, which will then cover um, everything ready for the 2016 implementation date. And we will then include the new volume one, which deals with um, dwellings. And as I say, that's the format that the Welsh Government uh, approved documents are taking to differentiate us from, from England, from, from Scotland, where, where, wherever. Um, and we followed a very similar approach in terms of format to the Part L approach, taking an opportunity to try and improve the readability of the documents. Okay. Um, it's a new area we're moving into, this um, mass market, you know, anywhere between six and 9,000 new homes a year um, are going to um, require the installation of, of sprinklers. And there's some learning to be done. There's some learning to be done from the industry point of view. There's some learning to be done from the house building point of view um, and a whole other host of um, parties that are involved in, in, in the housing development process. The Minister last month announced that we, uh, Welsh Government will be funding a pilot programme for designing and installing sprinklers in the new social housing programme. That's what we call the social housing grant programme. And we're going to be looking for two to 300 houses combining a mix of development size, large schemes, small schemes, a mix of type, apartments, houses, and, and, and house types, and a mix of geography. And we would also hope to cover um, the three areas of Wales, or the three water company areas of Wales um, to, to build on um, their policies and, and the experience that came from, came from that. And that'll be combined with a detailed monitoring program. And what we're looking to get is, some, is the experience of design and installation, costs, the cost savings. We include costs within our regulatory impact assessment as our best estimate um, of the um, current costs of installation. Water supply issues, which have been d discussed um, in the various consultation, um, the consultation discussions that we had how the statutory guidance is then applied um, by building control, what the experience of the tenants um, is. And we'll be look, looking to publish a report in the autumn of 2015. And we'll shortly be approaching RSLs, housing associations, um, for um, applications towards that program. But it's a sizable program, we, ho we hope, that'll deliver some important understanding, will dispel some myths, and gives confidence because in the discussions I have with um, industry out there and with, and, and, and with, with clients, um, there's a confidence that needs to be built up. Um, this isn't a new technology, and you're going to hear from Ian Goff on, on what we know and, and understand about, the, uh, about sprinkler, sprinkler systems. But this pilot program, we, help, we hope, will help inform that and give people confidence. Skills is an issue that is um, clearly something we need to consider. The sprinkler industry exists, it's there. They're quite capable of, of, of inst in, in installing in, in new houses, but perhaps long term that's not where we think we're going to go. And discussions are taking place between ministers 
about what provision needs to be made. And so in the pilot program, we'll be involving um, the tr uh, uh, colleges, because these are the, um, the organizations that will put on the training courses. We'll look at whether it is a new skill or whether it fits with uh, as an extension of perhaps a, a plumber or a heating engineer skills, those sort of issues. So that dialogue is going on. And um, we're talking to, um, as I say, the training colleges, sector skills council, and the industry about how we move that forward.